What's up, everybody? This is Miranda Alcaraz, and this is episode number 27 of the More Than Nothing podcast. Uh, the idea for this episode came to me, honestly, last night when I was 75, maybe 80% asleep. And I was thinking about how it's podcast filming day tomorrow and what what's on my mind? What do I need to think about? And um, I want to talk about what more than nothing isn't. So we talk a lot about the meaning behind more than nothing and how you can apply it to all aspects of your life um, and how it's this ability to maintain consistency through being willing to just do something even if it's not perfect, even if it's not exactly what you had planned, even if it doesn't seem like enough, um, that more than nothing will help you to stay consistent. Well, kind of a little backstory. Uh, I have worked in fitness for 20 years now, since I was 17. I'm 37 years old. That sounds like a really long time. It is a really long time. And I know because of that, um, how people are so great at taking an idea that's just fantastic and twisting and bending and finding holes and gaps in in the way that it's described or the rules or whatever and completely ruining what was a great idea or a great fitness plan or a great mantra and kind of taking it away from what it was originally intended to be. Um, An example of this, let me give you an example is when I was um, working on the seminars, uh, we would talk a lot about the paleo diet. If you guys don't know what the paleo diet is, it's um, basically you eat the way that the cavemen used to eat, right? And um, the idea is to eat real food. So we're talking, the way that we used to describe eating real food was to only shop the perimeter of the grocery store, skipping the bakery. So on the perimeter of the grocery store is where you'll find all the fruits and veggies. It's where you'll find all the, like the meat department. You will not find anything processed and packaged and in a box on the perimeter. That's where they keep everything that's fresh. Another way that we used to describe real food uh, is if you can grow it or you can kill it, you can eat it. Or if you need to look at Um, an ingredients list to know what's in it, it is not real. No one turns over a bag of spinach and says, oh, like, I wonder what's in this, or, you know, it's, it is what it is. An apple is an apple, a hamburger patty is a hamburger patty, a chicken breast is a chicken breast. That's real food. So that's something that we used to teach at the CrossFit seminars all the time. And um, it, the paleo diet or the paleo version of that, which is even more strict, Um, became very popular in the fitness community, specifically the CrossFit community, um, when I was working seminars. Way more popular in that community than it is right now. Like, it was religion to people. I used to eat that way for the most part. um, There was a period of time in the CrossFit community where you would be, like, shamed for eating oatmeal for breakfast. You would be, like, no one was carrying around bread and and joking about eating donuts. Like, there was a period where people were die-hard paleo. And during this period, we started to see a lot of, like, paleo cookbooks coming out and paleo recipes for pancakes and cookies and brownies and all the things that you would not associate with real food were coming out with these recipes of how to kind of take this idea of eating real food and twist it and change it and alter it and make what you actually want to eat fit. And where people would rationalize this is they'd be like, well, I'd still, all the ingredients are still real food. Um, But the idea behind real food was to get rid of all the sugars. And we had to remind people like, hey guys, honey, it still has a lot of sugar. So if you're just like making these recipes with organic cane sugar or like raw coconut sugar or whatever it is, just because it's on the paleo list, you're missing the point of what we were trying to get you away from. We were trying to get people's um, plates balanced with fruits and veggies and meat and nuts and avocados and things like that, not with a paleo pancake stack that when you look at the breakdown of it, 
has just as much sugar in it as regular pancakes. Sure, does it have more vitamins and minerals? Absolutely. But you're, they were missing the point. So we had to remind people. I used to say at the seminars, the fastest way to get all of the clients in your gym to gain five pounds is to have a paleo challenge and pass out paleo cookbooks to everyone because they will think that just because something is paleo or made out of a paleo cookbook that they can eat as much of it as they want and um, they're, they're sticking to the diet. Of course, there are times when if somebody is like really diehard into processed food, having them start there might be a great step, um, but still inching them toward where we want them to be, which is just real food in the state that they come in for crying out loud um, and not trying to like weasel our way around the rules or the, the main idea. So that's like an example of what I see a lot in the fitness industry and what I don't want to see become a thing with more than nothing. So I was thinking about it and what more than nothing is and what it isn't. Um, more than nothing came, you know, and this, the actual saying to, in my mind is like less than a year old when I started using the hashtag and everything like that. But the, the concept came um, when I was in my car accident and I couldn't do a lot because I was in my neck brace and my hand was broken and I wanted to exercise still. And it was like, hey, well, I can I can continue to do something. So that was like the first idea that that was a drastic circumstance where I didn't have the option of doing anything more. More than nothing came for me when I was traveling all the time and I was like in a different time zone and limited on time and limited on equipment and definitely limited on energy in these drastic circumstances where it was a choice between nothing or more than nothing. And I chose the more than nothing. Um, what more than nothing isn't, so I kind of, this was, this is where I was like 80% asleep last night and this like slogan or tagline or whatever, this is where all my slogans and taglines, some of them good, like more than nothing and some of them ridiculous, but this one came in. We'll see how you guys like it. Um, more than nothing is not a cop out. It's a fail safe. So we do not do more than nothing so that we can get to our Netflix sooner. Okay. We do not do more than nothing because that's all we want to do. And so it's like, oh, well, whatever. I'm just more than nothing. Ha ha ha. You know, or we always choose the easiest version of the workout, or we always choose the path of least resistance, or we always choose the, the more, um, easy option. Maybe it's not even working out. Maybe it's with work stuff or relationship stuff or mom stuff. And we just kind of like throw the like more than nothing stamp on it and say, well, that's good enough because more than nothing, you know, um, more than nothing in any of those areas should be because you're doing something else in its place. And that something else should be adding to your life. So for example, right now, my workouts are often more than nothing for several reasons. One, my f I'm very pregnant. Um, I The baby's due in eight weeks. So the energy levels and just what I'm capable of doing right now, those circumstances put me in a more than nothing space a lot of times. It's not because I don't want to do more or because I'm not passionate about it or because I'm using this like more than nothing stamp. It's because it's where I'm, I am. It's uh, also because we're, I'm, I'm in a stage in my mo or in my life right now where I'm building this business and I'm a mom of a two-year-old and we have the home renovation. So I'm in a space of more than nothing uh, when it comes to my workouts. I don't more than nothing the business at all. Like that's a huge focus for me. In two months from now, I will probably more than nothing the business when my baby's brand new and I'm gonna be focused solely on taking care of this brand new newborn baby. And so it shifts where that will be, but it should never ever be a cop out. It's a fail safe. It's a, hey, I know that you don't have the time or energy or resources right now to do more, but you can do something. It's never an excuse. It's never, uh, oh, good enough. Now let me get back to being leisurely and, you know, not do, doing stuff that's not adding to my life. 
So when you guys are using this more than nothing, whether it's for workouts or whether it's for food choices or whether it's for, you know, what you're doing for your job or whatever, I want you guys to look at why does this have to be more than nothing? What am I spending so much time and effort and energy on that has put me in a position where this thing has to be more than nothing? And if that big chunk of time and energy is spent doing something that is not meaningful to you, is not <laughs> furthering your life, is not the stage of life that you want to be in, that's where you need to reevaluate, like, can I, can I push the boundaries of that stuff and spend a little bit less time there so I don't have to more than nothing, something that does mean so much to me. Um, I never wanted it to become, and I haven't seen this yet, by the way, this is just something that entered my mind. I never want more than nothing to become um, a way to get people to try less. Our goal should always be to go all in as much as possible with the things that we're passionate about and toward our goals and toward who we want to be and where we want to be. More than nothing is just there for us to keep us consistent when those times are difficult. So if you have big goals for your fitness, I encourage you to put as much energy and effort into those things as you can realistically with your life and with everything else that's going on in your life. Um, and then just have more than nothing in your back pocket for when those days come where you need to back off a little bit, whether it's because you're sick or because your kid is sick or you're traveling or whatever. So those are just some thoughts I kind of had today about what more than nothing isn't. Check yourself when you start using it. If you are if you feel yourself in like a, oh yeah, more than nothing space, evaluate why is this more than nothing today? Why? And if you're noticing a pattern of, for the last six months, I've kind of more than nothing to every single workout or every single project at work or every, evaluate. Like, am I just using this slogan now as an excuse to be lazy. I mean, I see some of our crew do it sometimes and I do it where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do the sandbag version today because it seems like the least painful option where grabbing the barbell or grabbing the dumbbells, honestly, it's not gonna take me longer. It's just gonna be more uncomfortable. And I see us do it and we're like, oh yeah, haha, ha, more than nothing. If you get into that space, know that that's not what it we want it to be. It's for dire circumstances. It's for circumstances where there really is no other choice. Push yourself, get uncomfortable, and make sure that you're not using it as a cop-out, just as a fail-safe. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time.